I'd like to introduce both of them by their former biographies. Um, Zuleka Jorti is a theatre director and lighting designer based in Delhi. Her work shifts between theatre and installation. Her ongoing research considers the structures and codes of performance, as well as the function and processes of the actor in reality and truth production, or as reality and truth production. From 2015 onwards, she's been exploring the framework of law as performance. The role of performance in law, and the performity of legal truth production. Her work has been shown at the Weiner Fest Ocean, Kunstern Festival of Arts, Festival the Autumn, Seoul Performing Arts Festival, the Asian Performing Arts Festival in Tokyo, the Berlin Biennale, the Kochi Biennale, and the Dhaka Art Summit amongst the host of other. And she's currently the director of the Gazi Theatre Archives at the Gazi Foundation for the Arts in New Delhi. And um, I urge you all who are in Delhi over the next couple of days to also go across to the Trivini Kala Sangam uh, for an exhibition around uh, scenography and spectatorship in the theatre, in the archive um, uh, and photography uh, that Sulika has worked on with the foundation. So we have Kurana who is filming this conversation. I don't know if you... Ah, okay. Um, works with photo, video performance, text, drawing, sound, music, voice, architecture, and installation. Her works traverse all of these sort of different mediums, but also modes of communication, if I can put it that way. And she uses the performative mode in their space, media, video, and sound to make works that are poetic and subversive at the same time. And the situational works often engage with questions around science specificity, the self, and the public. She studied art at the Royal College of Art, and earlier in Delhi at the College of Art here, and was in Amsterdam on a two-year residency program at the Rijks Academy. And since the late 90s, her works have shown all, literally all across the world. She lives in Delhi and is currently a visiting professor at the Shokan University in Sonja. Um, I'm just going to throw a few key words out there before we actually get into looking at a sort of, my, well, a larger history leading to the projects that both of them want to talk about. Um, but these are the words that we're going to try to interrogate and unpack via both their practice and in their practice. So, in clusters, if we want to have them, rehearsal, event, situation, encounter. Public, spectator, viewer, participant. And then site, location, and again, public slash private. Um, and I'd like to, uh, the format, if we could uh, have it this way, is that I'll ask uh, for instance, we kind of to start first, um, to, because I know you want to talk about a project that isn't moving. I, I don't know whether you should call it a project as such. Um, but if you could tell us a little bit about what you're working on right now, um, but also mention the previous two iterations, um, where it's inadequate to use the word theatre for it, it's in a way inadequate to call it a performance, uh, there are no actors in it, and yet it is in a way all at once an event, on one single evening, but also a rehearsal for an aftermath of what you're trying to do. And I know all of this sounds very esoteric, but if you could tell us briefly about these three iterations of landscape as evidence and artist as witness, um, leading to, of course, the project in Chantika. Um, thanks, Chantika. Um, I just uh, sort of a little bit, uh, I just kind of to take on from what was in my bio. Uh, I've been since 2015 working with uh, law and performance, which really, I, I just want to talk a little bit about what the activities are for me, just as a context. Um, in thinking about um, the idea of um, justice uh, has to be seen to be done which means that uh, there is a kind of, there is also the performance of it. This is one thing that uh, I've really been looking at as a kind of a central thought. The other kind of connections between law and theater are, are about uh, constructing narratives and which are believable narratives. Because actually this is what unfolds in the world. Um, 
the idea of what is a legal precedent is also very interesting to me uh, because it is about what becomes what can be made possible, which doesn't currently in that moment doesn't already exist, but which can be made possible, and that is how a precedent comes into play, a legal precedent. Um, I I kind of work on two um, uh, threads of uh, trials. Uh, one are uh, re reenacting or retrying legal historical trials, which I'm not going to talk about today. Uh, I'm going to actually talk about a, a, a series of uh, three projects, the third of which will be uh, I'm in the process of forming and will happen in uh, Chandigarh on the 5th of March. Uh, these are uh, trials that look at ecological issues and I'll just say a little bit briefly about them. Uh, the, the series name is Landscape as Evidence, Artist as Witness. These are uh, set up as commissions of inquiries under the Commission of Inquiries Act, which is um, uh, that you know the Parliament has given central and state governments the right to form a committee to look into public matters of interest. Um, uh, these have been staged with actual lawyers and with a retired sitting judge, a retired judge because we can't have an actual sitting judge. Um, with uh, artists as witnesses on uh, the issue at hand. The first one that happened in Delhi at the Constitution, Constitution Club, uh, had looked at the then uh, case of the Ken Bethua, the Wellington Project, um, which uh, uh, the projects are in collaboration with Coach International Artists Association. So in the petition, Coach and myself uh, sort of asked at that time for uh, to stop the campaign for the Wellington projects and the three artists who were invited as witnesses were Ravi Agarwal, Chiba Chachi and Natu Tata. Um, the second one uh, also with Coach uh, uh, and myself happened at Serendipity in 2018 and was looking at uh, the relationship of sustainable development and tourism and had two uh, local Goan artists, Vishal Rodi and Kedar Mundi. Uh, just to say that um, the, the judge, there is a judgment at the end of these trials, which is not pre-known to anyone. Uh, I give the judge uh, uh, the kind of an outline of what's going to happen the day before. And, uh, and then, of course, the event unfolds around uh, in front of him. Um, and he delivers a judgment. So these are all one day events. Um, I, maybe uh, this is. Yes, at this point, can, should we take a clip? Yes, yes. Could we please make us. Okay. Yeah, so this is a clip from uh, the. the the 2017 version. And the audio is not on. Yeah, if you can Are not economic values. When you expect me to be a patriotic citizen, 
you don't put an economic value to it, it's a value. So values cannot be measured. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. And I would add to that that not every, every value can be identified in a way which can be quantified. There are many, many qualitative values which we hold very dear in our existence, which we cannot measure in our benefit analysis. Sir, however, in your examination in case, you never mentioned that you have actually looked at the merits of this case. Am I correct in understanding that you have actually looked at the merits of this particular river linking project? May I argue that the river linking project? Yes or no, sir. Mr. Ravikant, you have the process. So, what you may remind me that it is under examination? Yes, I, I agree, but I would like to volunteer that. Uh, the river link project is a first of its kind. Not only me, nobody has looked at the merits of the case. There is no history to this particular kind of development. So I would claim that neither Global, Mr. Global's view or I have the opportunity at all to look at the merits of the case because there are no merits of the case. Mr. Global, there is no history of river linking in our country. River linking is something which has been done in the past time. And that's clear. I mean, have you seen, have you been to those countries, have you seen how the project was? That's exactly what the meant was. Uh, Your Honor, river linking introduces something called interbasin transfer. You transfer water from one basin to another. We cannot understand basin except in the in indigent and particular topologies. I cannot look at a basin in Europe and say this applies to the governor the governor. So we have to examine it on its own merits. Which you haven't done, Mr. Abhimaa. And I would ask, uh, so the clip uh, that you just saw had uh, retired Chief Justice Ritin Delhi Mohanjali yes. and my co, Anand Grover, who is a practicing uh, senior lawyer, and Ravi Agarwal, uh, who is an artist. And just a couple of comments out here, uh, Zudeka, because I was, I watched it, I don't know how, what else to say, but um, it was almost exactly like being in a court of law, and that was to do with the scenography as it had been set up. But the fact that this wasn't an entirely scripted play, so it differed from theater, and yet it drew upon the theatricality of all court hearings and all sort of matters of law and legality. So the question I could ask you, and leading to the Chandigarh thing, and uh, in this case, of course, it was a river linking project. In the second iteration, it was about the construction of this massive hotel, which was taking over indigenous land. And the third one actually looks at the question of the air pollution in Delhi, which becomes a burning question quite <laughs> Uh, one uh, sort of uh, cheap party um, for a few months every year and it's most sort of easily uh, blamed on the stubble burning in Punjab and that's going to be the third iteration now. So Zureka, you could tell us a little bit about this and the petition that you're writing in order to file at the end of it to the National Bay Tribunal which I thought differs from both of these the first iterations. Um, yeah, so just before I get to the Chandigarh project, I think uh, one of the critical things, just also because this is a talk about public and site, is that in deciding to do, you know, it was a, a, a long conversation and which went over six to eight months about where to actually uh, show the work um, and what is the site uh, that one will have it at. Because there was, you know, so we went. We did a range of things. I was just clear that it wasn't meant to be in an auditorium, uh, a theatre venue, simply because that venue and that site in itself has a very specific meaning about what is in that site. Uh, it means something very specifically. A stage is the, a theatre stage is a space that in itself has the capacity to be anything and everything and whatever you wish it to be. Um, and to me, this project was really uh, not about that. It was about being located very specifically uh, in order to produce a context to how uh, a viewer actually uh, saw the work, registered the work. And so we decided to uh, do, we chose finally the constitutional club because it is a place where there are matters of public interest regularly discussed. Um, and also the procedure itself was important because there's a long bureaucratic procedure and actually you have to uh, say what you're doing as a kind of a formal, as formal paper. Also to move to Chandigarh then because the petitioners are 
So um, the Chandigarh project is uh, la uh, the last in the series, uh, I would say, um, but does not fa uh, follow mission of inquiry. It is uh, under the framework protocols and laws of the National Green Tribunal, which was set up by the Supreme Court to look at uh, environmental matters in 2010. Um, the, the kind of the outline of the project is in looking at air pollution, its relationship to stubble burning. Actually, the project is looking at the insertion of rights of nature, legal naturehood, um, inserting those into uh, Article 21 of the Constitution, which is the right to life. Um, this. Um, this, this this founding petition, which is again coach myself and a minor against uh, the central and state governments and also kind of British Farmers Union, is currently being vetted by um, the Normandy Chair for Peace, which is a legal agency looking at climate justice, which is in Paris. So we have three lawyers from there looking at the petition that we have already drafted. And the idea is to think of the event as a rehearsal, to tighten the petition finally, this founding petition, and to submit it then actually to uh, the actual National Green Tribunal. Um, and that is sort of for me the end of the project. Uh, so we decided to state it in Chandigarh, because it is pertinent to Chandigarh. It would be in uh, Punjabi and Hindi with English uh, translation. and. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, basically, it, and it's at the open hand, which is in the capital complex right next to uh, the, high, the Punjab High Court. On the 5th of March. On the 5th of March. Um, I think, just again to refer back a little bit to the idea of site, but I think in the Chandigarh petition, uh, in the Chandigarh project, really about, um, so who is the audience for this work? Who would I like as somebody forming the work? Who do I think the work should speak to? And I think it's become very particular for me um, post the two earlier iterations, which were just for the general public. This one I particularly feel is uh, in some way the, the proceedings themselves and the, the petition itself almost can function best case scenario as a template. In which case, who is this template useful for? Um, and so for me, this project is really specifically for um, farmers unions, many of whom we've met in the process of research. Farmers themselves, many of whom we've met in the process of research. Um, activists, uh, lawyers, legal scholars, judges, um, the project also has three artists um, as well as three other witnesses. But I think um, it's just something I'm still thinking about. But to think that who the viewer is for the work is equally important to me uh, as much as the sort of the, the thing itself. Um, and in this, I'd like to go over to Sonia uh, because they're not quite clear sort of distinctions between the two practices. Um, and it really it makes me question how easily we use the phrase performance art, because I think what they practice sort of does away with any uh, fixed meaning to what that could be, the possibilities of that. But also thinking about performance as being most often linked to the body. Um, for instance, in Zoya's case, especially early work, uh, and quite a bit of it, um, it's the body of the artist herself. And increasingly over the last few projects, Sonia, and um, with your body that you insert into public spaces, um, whether in crowds or on a pavement or for that matter next to a stream, um, but also the invitation extent through your performing body to create a situation in which the viewer necessarily participates by becoming a part of the space that you create. And the container is an example of that with the uh, previous iterations, not iterations, but of course container iterations. Uh, but if you could think about this 
act of collectively creating a situation as performance and the role of the body in that, in movement or in stillness and the blurring of boundaries between this sort of public performance, whether by you or the audience who may be coming in as participant, and the very private space of, uh, let's say, solitude or sleep that you create. And we could either look at images while we're going along and we could talk over them, or should we look at them otherwise? Okay, sure. So we'll pause the slides now and then we go to the images. Hi everyone. So uh, thanks for that, Kathuva. Uh, so I actually have uh, increasingly started resisting the body because it's an over uh, throw. Uh, also, but uh, if I have to be specific, I would call it, uh, I mean, what I'm more interested in is the sentient body. So the feeling, emotional, non emotional, that doesn't really translate as sentient, but you know, the sensing body. Uh, and that and increasingly the need to involve other people. It has it has multiple reasons and you know it came on the heels of uh, uh, first facing myself in public and then wanting to know or starting to question what is what is this what who do we call public? Also how does it become a work of art? And then also this whole thing about the people when you're there looking at you, uh, they are witnesses. But a more hospitable thing would be if they were, if you insert an age in the witness, then it becomes witness. So people that they are, they are with you, they are experiencing it with you. So in, in, in a very sketchy way, these were some of the, you know, some of the trajectory uh, from working primarily in the earlier works, start playing the works now. Um, what I have done is I also have a, a, a asthmatic thing going on. So I put some quotations which would also say something about my work. And I put some slides from early work still now. And uh, then maybe I'll dwell on this project called Line Down on the Ground, which has been going on since 2006, where line um, uh, producing an affect but also wanting to lie uh, in the street, slowly then um, transformed as a gesture a uh, very private one to including people and then devising situations and what you see here would be also thinking of space and this time uh, why you're very happy uh, this uh, uh, communication uh, when the art fair asked for the discussion with me they, I said I wanted to contain space and months now it got translated as a, I was told oh you have a container and this was a month before Today, I was traveling and I was sick and I wanted to say, mm. but then when is it container? I thought, well, wow, that's a lovely idea, so I will do something with it. Because um, I'm jumping a little bit, um, I'm just speaking you know, a little bit. So, this all the previous iterations of lying down, either myself or with people, have been very expansive places, either art fairs or biennales or. Uh, you know, places where there's a very rich part of a very rich passage of people. Uh, but here there was a 10 by 20 feet container. Now what do you do with it? Uh, in terms of asking people to uh, come and lie down. So for, and also this was idea of the container, so I thought I'd open it. So I'll make it into a passage. It's a container but it's also a passage. And one of the best ways to uh, make the sensorial experience, I thought, would be to use, uh, over the over a period of time, I've also written a piece of text about why I do this line up thing, I call it proposal as poem, so I don't really like the word manifesto. So uh, I thought if this was somehow triggered when people pass through in the container, uh, that would be something interesting, it would become a sound chamber. And so we started to think about trying to use uh, maybe sensors or movement sensors and so on, which trigger the sound. And uh, something was not sitting right for me. I think it was coming on the heels of these two, three years of, or several years of this acute, imposed sort of isolation for each of us and 
this need to connect again more with people. And then by the time for the project itself, I have given out a poll for volunteers. I wrote a very detailed poll, so uh, very specifically detailed poll, so that I attract the kind of people who would really be interested. And that was giving me a lot of energy. So I thought, well, why not use human sensors? So instead of having this usual kind of somebody goes in and then a sound comes into place. Uh, so, when you come to the uh, container, you will be read, the poem will be read out to you individually. And that kind of intimacy is something which, yeah, I, I got to it off with. It also um, somehow sits within this thing about uh, creating the very private moments in perhaps a public situation.
is what happens even in the state trial. The judge, for example, was very specific at very many moments in time with the witnesses that he had to be looked at and spoken to, not the audience. So the, the procedures and protocols are very precise and very sharp um, and for everybody involved. Um, for, the, for the viewer too, because, um, for example, when it, it all begins, uh, I as a court master asks everybody to rise for the judge. And I was very curious the first time if anybody would, and actually everybody did. Um, you know, someone said, quote, right, I remember the Constitution Club and uh, Justice Singh scolded them so thoroughly, exactly the way it happens in a court, you know, yes. to throw to them out. Yeah, and I think this kind of um, participation or being part of this formality and this kind of a precision in a way, and there's a hierarchy, um, yet uh, the, the viewer, the judge, the witnesses, the lawyers, everybody together actually makes this event. It is about everybody being there to precisely some particular thing. It is about everybody is doing something very specific that all together forms this experience. It's not left out to chance at all in any which way. And I think for me, it is interesting to understand that in my mind it's always that this is not an event in a public space. This is, uh, this is public. In the sense that, I mean, the, the everybody being involved very specifically, what that allows you to, I think, experience and see, um, and see specifically, is kind of the system that actually one is a part of. But you sort of develop this format, right, of the legal trial. Um, well, they exist. They exist. What I mean is, in this sort of not quite fiction, not, I mean, in the first two trials, for instance, there wasn't a real intervention in the court of law, which you hope to do with the National yes. Tribunal you know, this time. Is that this particular format that you developed, could what you want to do, um, for instance, file this petition, happen without this? Like, what is it about this form that enables you to do what you want to do? Well, actually, we're playing out in the vetting of the petition by other lawyers in the fact that there will be a judgment. Actually, it is a reversal towards actually fine-tuning the petition to understand actually what what are actually at a basic level. What is the problem with what could there what would be the is there a problem with the petition? You know, and so it is a way to perform it out to understand what the judgment does and then go back to the petition again uh, to tweak it so that when you when one submits it to the actual National Green Tribunal, although we, we've got three lawyers on the project, it's been vetted by three other lawyers, I think this process of the judgment emerging at the end of this rehearsal in order to rework and redraft the petition if required is about kind of strengthening uh, because rights of nature are, um, you know, it, it's not, um, it, it's it's uh, it's a new area. It's it, it's it's got a lot of problems. The project has artists as witnesses yet again, um, in, and in, and through that, I'm really trying to think through um, the very very broad question of what is art do, but also try and think through what kind of knowledge does art produce. You know, precisely and can it, what does it do as uh, a evidence or a testimony in an actual court of law? Uh, and does this in fact allow for what is called a paradigm shift or a way of thinking about uh, a particular set of ideas? So the presence of artists as witnesses is very crucial in the project and how they will, there will be depositions and how do you include what has come out into the final draft uh, is critical. You know. But also thinking 
about the process, what, uh, again, in terms of what it enables or where it intervenes, I'm thinking that, for instance, the three artists you've got, and they're very deliberate choices in each of the three iterations, uh, in terms of their very rooted practices. So, for instance, Shweta Bhatta, Dukra, and Dhabra, and Dhabra, and uh, they have worked on research or the art that they make is connected to precisely the questions that you're asking or we're hoping to address. But I would argue then the, the paradigm shift occurs not just in the drafting or the filing of the petition. It occurs somewhat in the sort of many months of rehearsal leading up to this one event on the 5th of uh, March with, let's say, the three lawyers as well who would not have uh, sort of thought about art or um, uh, not facts being produced to think about it in legal terms or the sort of potency they may have or for that matter the sitting bench of three or five retired judges but also the artists themselves who need to then think far more sharply about what art has the potential to produce in very real ways since the issues that they're talking about are very real and that for me is a paradigm shift in the process of this as well not just for the viewer who's sitting there or the petition that's filed well, I think the process of making this work or any work, and I, I, I mean, I think Sonia would agree with that, I think, or I don't know if you would. Uh, the process produces, the process itself produces a lot. Um, what, uh, it tells you how to move forward many things of the process that, uh, you know, of any process, some, some things are retained in the, uh, in the final performance or however one wishes to call it, many things uh, drop out. Uh, so, uh, and which is why it's also a rehearsing process for me is precisely about how do you begin to put things together and sometimes an unlikely or combination of things together, a set of different, very different <coughs> ideas that are linked directly, vaguely, um, and then to see as one goes through what remains, what stays, and that's based on what sort of has, what has kind of value in itself, but also works with the vision as a whole. Um, and so the end product also has just some part of it that remains and is sharpened and tightened up. So a rehearsal for me always is about the production of many things. So not necessarily towards that one singular event. No, actually the process is something entirely, I feel, on its own. Yeah. That it produces, that one gets something is produced at the end is yeah. a sort of almost an event. And in inevitability and fairly irrelevant for me. Okay. In some um, yeah. But for the same question, Sonia, may I then, on your behalf, invite everybody to the container? Um, I want time cues out there, and I think it would be really important to actually experience also. Is that okay? So how, how much time do we have actually? It's five uh, so Sure, absolutely, yes, please. Yeah. Which is that actually, uh, I don't think it's about doing rehearsals at all. That's not how this works. It is really thinking about setting up the apparatus where something can happen which is very random. And uh, mostly people who are there are also people who are... So there is a certain set of things and again to talk about... So it's not, for me it's not the sense of rehearsal as such, but of the repetition of the fundamental activity. So for instance, the line down thing, the reason it's been going on from 2006 up to now is that the new that the uh, proposed or opposition or ideas or, or questions come to mind as I go along, starting from a very personal reason to wanting two, three years after into it, wanting to write about it, and then realizing that this whole thing made me want to invite people and then maybe want to think of space. So it is a very slowly evolving process. And you know, maybe it's a sort of a luxury thing that if you want to, you already realize that you're already, it's okay. I mean, nobody's really paying it much attention. So you can go on and on for the rest of your life doing this. But yeah. uh, people do sometimes pay attention and correct me yes, if I remember wrongly or whatever. Rightly. Uh, the, rightly. 
is, uh, for instance, the act of lying down. Huh? So this is a contained space, a container, where you are separating yourself from the sort of primitive thing of the art. I would say slightly separating. If like we are two noble or, or two noble sure. things that we are separating, then I mean, we are not going to separate them. Well, yeah. But I'm thinking, for instance, uh, this is comparatively a private space, not entirely. Yes. But it sets out to be. Absolutely. But for instance, when you go like, lie down on a pavement in a city, mm -hmm. or for instance, I remember you were going to Hyderabad uh, towards the Chaminar, and just a very benign act of somebody lying down. I mean, one would imagine lying down, but different publics then react in such different ways where they can sometimes be in So first of all, uh, I was just, when I was listening to you, and I've seen this work, I was there. This is a very different. So it probably wasn't either a completely different conversation or a very long one for us to talk about. I mean, it's very interesting for me, it really is. Um, so for me, this is not activism. Completely, maybe, but this is this is a gesture. This is a gesture of maybe protest, but it's not really protest because all the way with all of performance or performativity or the fact that this is a gesture being presented in the public is already there. So I would not, you know, take that thing. Um, and so bringing the Hyderabad thing, which is where for the last for a little bit, also made me think about and made me work more with people. Uh, from the, that point onward, this is 2010. So I also have these cutouts as part of the one of the inscriptions that I, I put out cutouts of uh, this drone form in Pepsi glass, which then are photographed because they reflect what's around it. And at one point I chose a place because of this whole record of pigeons, etc. It was something in the Jarminar, but pretty much outside the mosque area. However, the moment I put the cut out, within seconds, people didn't speak to each other. It's not like they decided to attack it. There was more frenzy, and I was attacked, and you know, very, very sort of uh, not physical violence, but people were so hostile and angry that I put a plastic cut out in an area which for them was the most area. For me, was technically and you know, actually technically not the most area. And being from Saharanpur and then being Hyderabad, I was so confident about I talked to them. Because I don't speak Saudi Hindi, I just Saudi, so I thought that Bhakshat Or which name worked out here. That was stupid of me because people were not willing to listen at all. And that made me think of what they are Public Public is getting made, that work is also getting made and is getting formed as the thing is happening. There is no fixed idea of a public decide. Thank you so much. And uh, we can move to yeah, so the dinner? I was thinking it would be probably a good idea to make the dinner bit whatever. Not really. To move to the container. Not all of you have to lie down. Some might want to, and I would like to read out. One exciting thing for me is that I had originally written the text in 2009 in English and then it got translated in so many languages around the world and I was a little bit ashamed that it's not in Hindi. So these last few weeks have been to get it translated and that was very interesting because there are very diverse, we had five translators with very different meaning but anyway you hear only one. Yeah, okay. So, Thank you so much. Come, come with us. Thank you.